This is the story of a man who devoted his life to horses. A man who walked away from the animals he cherished for the love of his children. But when his life changed in one fleeting moment, it would be a horse he turned to. A horse in a life and death struggle that everyone gave up on. Together they healed one another. Together they dared to win the richest race in the world. His name is Bill Kasner. And he is well armed. Bill Kasner grew up riding in the desert near his home in El Paso, Texas. And he fell in love with horses. At 15, he made his way to the backstretch of Sunland Park Racetrack. I started galloping horses there, got paid a dollar a head, gallop horses around the racetrack in the morning, and I thought that was, life just couldn't be any better. It was like I'd died and gone to heaven. I was getting paid to, to ride real race horses. Bill followed his passion to the track in search of a career as a trainer, and it was at a mutual window in Nebraska that he found another love. In my spare time, I worked at the racetrack, and Bill came up and bought a, a ticket from me. That summer, we backpacked through Europe, and when we got back, we got married on a dark day of racing. By 1974, he was a journeyman trainer. For six years, they crisscrossed the country, and Bill and Susan were blessed with two daughters, Casey and Carrie. It's quite a nomadic life. Both our children were born on the racetrack. Their kids' first words weren't mommy or daddy. It was horse. I started saying hoss, 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 something like that, and then I got the R in horse, and you know, I've been saying horse the entire time, and that was before mom or dad or <laughs> anything else. You know, as a father, it's, it's, always, it's always fun if your, your children have the same passions that, that you do, the same interest. You know, the main thing you want is for your, your children to find something that they enjoy. Uh, for Casey, it was soccer. For Carrie, that, that was horses. She, she loved going to the horse races. She absolutely loved horses. After six years on the road, Bill gave up his dream of training to provide a better life for his family. Your mind starts to change when you have children and I knew that the nomadic life of a race tracker was probably not in their best interest long term. I was moving six, seven, eight times a year. Our girls were getting older and it, we needed to get a stable home and uh, so it was something, uh, it was a new venture in our life. It was a little scary. I'd never made a living with anything other than a horse. I felt confident that I could do it. I knew I had to do it for my family. I knew I had to do it for those girls, and I figured life would, would take me where it would. Life took him to the top of the business world. With former owner Kenny Trout, they created XL Communications, combining telecom with multi-level marketing. Together, they turned an office the size of a stall into a $5 billion company. But a victim of Bill Kasner's success was the connection to the horses who had brought him so much joy throughout his life. And racing thoroughbreds became a distant memory. I didn't ever think I'd get into business again. I really had, had walked away from it. I thought the flame was extinguished. After a visit to a thoroughbred farm in Texas, the light began to flicker. When Carrie and I went to college, it was his turn again. I don't think his love for the animal or sport waned at all. Going back to horses is exactly what he wanted to do. I started uh, team roping again. I'd roped when I was younger, but uh, I guess the, the fire was never extinguished. It was just smoldering and, and it, uh, it rekindled. In the year 2000, he teamed up with Trout once again 
this time to purchase a farm in Kentucky. They christened the new venture Windstar. By 2002, Bill Kasner was living his dream, breeding and racing elite thoroughbreds. His daughters were traveling abroad, following their own passions. Carrie's sense of adventure was, was something that came very natural to her. Carrie had gone on uh, a semester at sea when she was a junior in college. And when they, they came back, I think there was, a, there was a hunger to see more. In the fall of that year, Carrie and Casey flew to Thailand together. Carrie then traveled on her own to discover the Indonesian island of Bali, renowned for its surf, sand, and rich cultural history. When she went to Bali on her own, um, she was definitely nervous, and I had a tremendous amount of respect for that. I don't know if I could have done that. She had heard so much about Bali, and it, it was a hop, skip, and a jump away, and she called me and wanted me to go with her, and I said, yes, I'll go. But obligations at the farm kept Susan in Kentucky. I told her I just really couldn't make this trip at this time for her to go ahead and have a great time, and we'll see her when she gets back. When I heard that, and you know, one of the the biggest, most popular nightclubs in Bali had been bombed, and there were a lot of casualties. Um, I something hit me. I had a pretty bad feeling. In the confused aftermath, with tourists fleeing the island, Bill Kasner, his wife Susan, and family friend John Guider flew to Bali in search of Carrie. I didn't know what we would find there. It was, it was it, Bali was a crime scene. It was a, it was a, a place where a terrorists had attacked. We had no idea what what would the aftermath would hold. It was, it was definitely. A, a horrific sight, but it was nice to see where she had been, you know, the, the previous two days, the, the room that she was in, and, you know, her swimsuit was still hanging on the shower head, and her things were still out, and I, I don't think it made it any easier, but it just sort of told a, a fuller story. We were so fortunate because there were parents that had gone over to try and find their children and couldn't. And it took us a long time to find Carrie in Bali, but we did. We had been over there for, for five days and we found her on the fifth day and identified her and, uh, and, and were able to bring her home. Bill Kasner was living his dream life, a successful businessman, family man. He was reveling in returning to his roots in thoroughbred racing. But success could not shield him from the blast which hit his family like a bolt from the sky, leaving a hole impossible to fill. 50,000 years ago, a meteorite descended in the heart of bluegrass country. In the wake of its impact, a lake was formed. Today that lake is the centerpiece of Windstar Farm. The farm where Bill Kasner was able to share his love of horses with his children. And it would be here, surrounded by the horses he cherished, that he would find salvation after the death of his daughter, Carrie. Rolling hills, green grass, the classic fencing. It's an incredibly peaceful place. And when you look out the windows, you just see horses. Winston Churchill once said that there's something good about the outside of a horse for the inside of a man, and, and that's, that's always certainly been the case with me. A 
horses have always been that solace, that comfort, that joy. They want a little feed, water, and perhaps a warm stall on a cold night. They're something that uh, it's a great gift from God. On April 4th, 2003, on what would have been Carrie Kasner's 24th birthday, a colt by Tisnow was born in the Windstar Foaling Barn. Bill Kasner would name him Well-Armed. Big, strong horse, very powerful, but a little pigeon-toed in front. So from that standpoint, you know, if you took him to a sale, he would probably not stand out and, and people would walk by him. He loves this horse. This is one of his babies. He just wanted to take that horse and, and, and make him special. Well-Arm's career began slowly. By early in his three-year-old year, the gelding started to show great promise. But in March of that year, he underwent surgery for a bone chip in his knee, setting into motion a series of events that put Well-Arm's life in serious jeopardy. I received a phone call. It was a Sunday morning. It was about 6.30 a.m. And that's never a good thing when you get a phone call on a Sunday morning that early. The surgery was uneventful, but during Wellarm's recovery, something went horribly wrong. Somehow, in a manner still open to question, Wellarm fractured a piece of bone off his right hip. The consequences could be catastrophic. If Wellarmed could not support his weight, he would not survive. He was laying down flat in the stall. He was shaking. He was broken out in a cold sweat. His heart rate was sky high. He was obviously in a lot of pain. It really appeared like he was trying to die on us. Bill was so upset after Wellarm got hurt, uh, completely devastated. You know, one of the vets uh, said, you know, something that you may consider is, is euthanasia, but there was no way I was gonna put this horse down unless we'd exhausted every other means. For 48 hours, Well Arm's life hung in the balance. Slowly, starting with his toe, he was able to add weight to his right hind leg. And hour by hour, his condition improved. 30 days later, Well Armed emerged from his stall. He was on the road to recovery. However, his career as a racehorse was over to everyone, except Bill Kasner. He had lost quite a bit of weight, but you know, he still had that sparkle in his eye. And we knew he wanted to come back to the racetrack. And Bill loves this horse so much. He knew he had to get him back to the racetrack. The chairman of one of the world's largest breeding and racing operations persevered on his own. Utilizing a lifetime of knowledge and skills as a horseman and former trainer, to rehabilitate the horse born on his late daughter's birthday. I always really uh, felt well Arm was a special horse. He had a lot of try in him, and those are the kind of horses you love being around, those horses that really give you everything they have. And uh, I was just gonna give him the opportunity to show me how good he could be. We put him in the, in the swimming pool and started swimming him every day. We swam him for 10 months. Well Arm, could swim like a duck and, and uh, he was out there breaking the ice in the winter time and swimming that horse. We put him on the free walker every day and, and started increasing that day by day. We poured the coal to him and he took, took everything that, that we threw at him. He was, uh, in the end, he was swimming 35 laps in the pool and, and wouldn't blow a candle out when he, when he came out. Bill had a determination that I hadn't seen in him in a long time. And they both fed off of each other, well-armed off of Bill and Bill off of well-armed. And I mean, they have this connection uh, that you don't see too often between man and horse, especially racehorse. And um, there's definitely a love between the two of them. Together, they healed each other. In Well Armed, the owner found his equine soulmate. With Bill's touch, Well Armed made what can only be called a miraculous recovery, due in part to hard work and, above all, due to one man's dedication to a horse who became part of the family. And after almost a year and a half away from near death, 
Against all odds, Bill would try to do the impossible. Not only return well-armed to the racetrack, but compete against the best horses of his generation. We knew this horse was, was ready to, to get on with the program. Others had humanely wanted to condemn Well Armed to death, but there had been enough death in Bill Kasner's life. For nearly a year and a half, he refused to give up, pouring his aching soul into rehabilitating the horse and, in the process, perhaps rehabilitating his own heart as well. They made a good team, the gelding matching his owner's determination stride for stride. It was now finally time to prove the skeptics wrong. I sent well-armed Owen Hardy in, at Santa Anita and, and told him to, to not be afraid to train this horse. Bill warned me in advance that I was going to get some calls from the farm personnel saying that the horse was messed up and he's not going to make it, and to just ignore all that. Well-armed did his part. He returned to the races nearly five years to the day the Kasner's lives were rocked by a blast in the night. Well Arms running style is he likes to go to the front and, uh, and catch me if you can. Down the center of the track, Heat Seekers coming flying late. Well Arms, Heat Seeker, I believe Well Arms might have just held on. During this time, Bill found comfort with the success of the Windstar Farm horses. And he honored his daughter Carrie's memory by adding her initials to the Windstar Farm silks. Carrie lets herself be known that she's there with us, and she was definitely there. She, she comes around quite often. In a testimony to his owner's horsemanship and perseverance, over the next 16 months, Well Armed earned nearly a million and a half dollars. But the biggest reward was still to come. It would be both monetary and very personal. It was the six million dollar World Cup in the Islamic Emirate of Dubai. In March of 2009, Bill and Susan Kasner again traveled halfway around the world, this time with anticipation instead of dread. Their mission, to fulfill dreams which transcend the bounds of Earth. A horse born on his late daughter's birthday. A horse whose life hung in the balance after a devastating injury. But Bill Kasner could do what no one else could. And like a sculptor molding his clay, he did for well-armed what he could not do for his youngest daughter. He brought him back to life. Muslim extremist had claimed his daughter in their pursuit of glory. Bill and Susan Kasner were seeking glory in a Muslim country, surrounded by those who believe in peace. Where we were sitting, I was the only woman. We were sitting with all people from, men from Dubai in a spot that Bill had seen, that's where he knew that's where he wanted to watch the race from. In my heart, uh, we were winning. The, we were gonna win that night. With Kerry Kasner's initials on his sleeve, Well Arms regular rider Aaron Greider knew this race was different. Well Armed knew it too. That was the first time I was ever on him where he was alone without anybody handling him and he just put his head down and he just walked. I mean, it was like his chest was out and his shoulders were big and he was just walking with quiet confidence. Ah, no. They're racing in the Dubai World Cup and well-armed won the start and won it clearly. The horse absolutely caught a flyer at the, at the break. Was standing perfect, out broke the field, went to the front. When he had run an eighth of a mile and I was watching him how easy he was running, his ears were just going back and forth. Aaron just had a long cross, sitting very confident on the horse. The horse was running very, very relaxed. I knew that, that we had one heck of a shot of winning that night. The further he went, the stronger that feeling got. The field, well armed in front as they turn down the side, 1,300 well, meters. You, you've got the confidence, you know their ability, but when they come in with the right mindset and everything comes together on the right night, you know, that's when big things happen. The good thing about riding at night is you can watch shadows. I just kept seeing them and, and they weren't gaining on me and we were just going at a nice leisurely pace. When he hit the head of the lane and he was still in front, I knew they weren't going to catch him. 
when he asked his horse to run at the last quarter of a mile, the horse just rebroke on him and just ran off and left him. What I remember the most was looking at Bill and his excitement, and this is what Bill had dreamed of and for this horse. What the two of them, well armed and Bill had been through, it just brought tears to my eyes. It's well armed, five lengths in front, six lengths in front, seven lengths in front of Gloria de Gatbo, and from Cigar to well armed, it's all over at Nan El Shiva. It was probably one of the most astounding performances of, of any horse that I've ever had. I, I, I can't ever remember uh, any horse that I've ever had winning by, by, by 14 lengths. I knew that uh, Kerry was going to be probably hanging on to Aaron Grider and riding that horse with him. She definitely played a big part of it. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm sure they would love to put their arms around and hug her, but uh, she rode that horse with me. It was all his hard work that had gotten this horse, a horse that people had given up on and, you know, basically wanted to put the poor horse out of his misery. And through Bill's sheer grit and perseverance, he was solely responsible for this horse being there on that night to win by 14 and end up winning the World Cup. It just it was certainly a magical night. Faced with the unimaginable, where it would be all too human to harbor hate, Bill and Susan Kasner honor their daughter's memory by living their life as messengers of faith and understanding. I don't blame uh, the, the Muslim religion for, for, for Carrie's death. Carrie was in the, in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time, which anybody in this life uh, can be. But to condemn a whole faith uh, because of a very, very small group is, is, is totally unfair. We were absolutely incredibly blessed to have had her for, for 23 years. It, uh, there's never a day that I don't think about her. Uh, she, she is with us all the time. You know, uh, none of us are here for more than the blink of an eye. Um, uh, we're all on the road to eternity. And um, uh, I know we'll all be together again. Thank you.